I don't know. Those readings look strange all around. Come on, but what is? Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Beacon Hills After Dark listener Q and A's. I, of course, am your host, Sticky Keys. To my right is our co-host, or to my left, rather, is my co-host, Momo. I can't tell my left and my right very well. Sometimes I can't. Because I broke my leg, my left leg, and then I could. And then I messed up my right knee, and then I couldn't. <laughs> but it's all good now. I just, I'm just there. Momo! Say hi, Momo! All right, we are going to do Q&A. We're, we're in a little bit of a rush today. Because oh, I have to do some babysitting. Because this one was all like, oh, I'm on my way. And then an hour later was like, oopsie. <laughs> yeah. I have things to do. Yeah. Um, Sometimes when you're dealing with people and then dealing with family and then dealing with some other shit, you got things to do. Oh, wait. Is, is, a, is American Idol on tonight? Yes, that's what everyone's talking about. Still so, um, Anonymous says, the only safe family in this episode were, was the Argents, and that's because Chris is already alone. <laughs> they really went there, though. McCall, Stalinsky's Martins, this episode was better than the whole of season four. Hmm. I put yes, but also no. <laughs> um, What's the question? Oh, this on the... Uh, basically, do you think this episode was better than the entirety of season four? Mm. If you take out the uh, orphans, if you take out Oliver Swirl, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Oliver Swirl. I'm like, I think last season had some decent parts. No, you're thinking 5A. She's talking about episode or season four, which was abysmal garbage. <laughs> With the Deadpool and I would still Meredith. say I would still say I mean Mer I always enjoyed Meredith. I think they screwed over Meredith. Well, exactly. That's what I'm just like. Ugh. But yeah, Oliver Swirl made the whole season. But yeah. um, I there were some there were some high points and some low points. Even the season four, and I feel Tony. like we'll I feel like season Tony. I feel like season four had the better had the better chance of being great and yeah. they fucked it up because they didn't know how to actually do two separate storylines mm -hmm. instead of making one whole thing. They should have been two, like, one should have been season four, one should have been season five. Right. You know? Um, if they hadn't brought back Kate, which is really sad because I love Kate, if they hadn't brought back Kate, I think I would have been... I, we could have kept loving her. Yeah. yeah. She got really This stupid. episode was just so confusing and... Because the previous season was so fucked up and didn't make any sense, I can't, I personally can't say that this episode was better than season four. I yeah. would say season four actually was better. Alright. Um, it says, I'm still trying to Sorry. figure out where Styles trusted Theo. They had a mutually assured destruction thing going on, but he didn't trust the kid. He treated Theo like Peter. I don't like you, but you'll, you're useful, so I'll deal. And yeah. I said, there's a difference between me pretending to trust Theo for an ultimate ulterior motive and you believing Theo that I murdered someone in cold blood without giving me a chance and deciding my fate in your pack based on it. Touche. But again, I believe in murder boyfriends and I also believe in Styles and Peter. So <laughs> some of us have a different theory on that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the trust thing, and I even said this on the podcast that we recorded, that Styles in a weird way trusted Theo just because he kept a secret. Mm -hmm. But I also know that Theo's the type that would manipulate him into doing Well, I don't shit. even think he trusted him. I think he was just like, you know it wasn't secret. like, yeah, you know my secret. It wasn't like I trust you with my secret. It's, I can't do anything about it. Like, you know? kind of hit the body for me, so I guess I like, got a hope. Exactly. But, um, I mean, I saw that look that they gave each other, and I was just like, everything's okay. Ah, <laughs> it's going to be all right. Everything's okay for them. So, um, it says, I'll always be amazed by the fact that whatever character is with Styles, they'll always have more chemistry than Stalia. And I think I kind of jumped on the Steo train now. Oops. <laughs> Which, yeah. Styles' eyes were sparkling. They really were. They were sparkling. I do not understand. It was gorgeous. 
But um, yeah, he has so much chemistry with everyone but Malia, and they keep trying it. And the stands keep trying it, and it's just like, y'all, let it go. Like, as much as they talk about us and Steric. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, oh, Lunar Advent be playing games. Hold on just Lunar Advent. He says, uh, did you roll your eyes at the Dread Doctors now having force field and or telekinetic power strong enough to deform and repel bullets? How much did you want to bet that uh, when they're defeated, not one of them will use it in their final battle? I swear the two villains have the most convenient onsets of amnesia I ever did see. This whole show has amnesia. It really does. That's why I said drunk history. That's why the name of this episode is drunk history. Because it's just, they they get to reminiscing over a bottle of Jack. And what comes out is what we see on the screen. <laughs> it is a mess. With the perfect lip sync. Yeah, girl. And so uh, it says, what is the worst part about nightmarish for you? I like that they call it that. Uh, for me, the worst part is how it's obviously more of Hep Davis's own necrophilic <laughs> paramaniac fantasies than anything true to the character. If Davis made it less about sex and creepiness, if he took out all the creepy sexualized dreams and made it more about how their shared power allows a connection and understanding no one else could have with them, marish could be decent. I still may not ship it, but I wouldn't hate it. Wait, Finding it worthwhile only due to naked question? Ryan Kelly it provides. Oh, uh, where are you? Okay. Hey, honey bun. Um, well, you know I already said what makes it creepy for me. Oh, yeah, um, we talked about this on the podcast. Yeah. So you all see, we all will see that coming up. Yeah, I, I just... The age issues, the, the power dynamic, issue. and the fact that he's having sexed out dreams and she has no idea. Well, she also <laughs> has daddy issues, and we need to talk about that, too. There's so many issues going on with this couple as a ship. And the thing is, is that, like, people seem to forget they aged her up mm -hmm. to make it okay. Because the thing is, is that would it have been okay if she was still, what, 16 or 17? No. Mm -hmm. They aged her up purposely. Which means that they knew something was wrong to begin mm -hmm. with. But there's a lot of and lines it's a that lot just of... can't... And the thing is that, like, I feel like, okay, maybe it would be a little different if they had chemistry. Yes. But they don't even have chemistry. And they keep forcing this chemistry. And like Kelly is like, not a good actor. God bless like, him. Like, the, the shower scene was kind of creepy anyway, but at least it was, a, it was just a little bit more chemistry than they've had in a long time. But it always seems so forced, at least in my They opinion. had Mama's boobs pushed up to the hell. I was very like, good, she had a very good bra. She has and a good or, back, but yeah, that was like or, a water bra. Like, that was yeah. like, like her titties were up here. Yeah. <laughs> it was just they like, what is happening? They had a very good happening? bra working for her, or mm -hmm. a good swimsuit, whatever it was. They had it, they had it tight on her. But I just, I just can't. And that's why I said, I'm like, and we're going to talk, it's going to be on the thing, but I talked about, you know, Jeff watching or reading too much manga um, <laughs> or anime. I feel like he's totally still in that idea from something that I've seen before multiple times. He, um, but it, it seems like a lot of work to not have Stidia. Mm -hmm. And that's what this feels like to me, especially because I feel like that they feel that they were backed in a corner with Stelia mm -hmm. and to break them up and to kind of give Malia her own story and her own thing. Mm -hmm. But now they're like, well, now people are going to start asking for Stelia or for Stidia. And, you they know, we saw how Stidia. we they could have showed how Stidia was well, actually no, the better ship. What I'm saying, though, is that, well, that's the problem. And so because then that would be telling them that they were wrong. And so then you have this thing of, well, we know how this went with the Sterix, so let's go ahead and, you know, make sure that there's no way that people will think they will actually get together. When you're doing all these moves, like, Styles is going to be the one to go save Lydia. He's you know, still, like, we know he that. He still has more sentimental, like, the fact that the first thing he did is he went to find Lydia, Lydia in yeah. the hospital. Like, there's still these things that would prove that they are the stronger chef. I will say that when Styles. I guess he hasn't had a lot of experience, but when he cuts you off, he cuts you off. Because I remember the, I guess, season four when they supposedly broke up, even mm -hmm. though they did, she just walked away, but yeah. I don't know. He was like, I've been sending you texts. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know where this girl is. <laughs> like, don't see her. He's like, I sent you a text. And she was just like... <laughs> 
And then this time she was like, oh, well, let me call Scott. He was like, don't call anybody. Don't call that girl. Don't call nobody. How dare you? I don't know love this how. I don't know this I don't know this how. <laughs> no, it's so true, though. But, um, yeah, I just... I, I agree, but then you did explain that, you know, small town, it might be the whole small town thing, yeah. where it's a little bit more accessible. I don't know, I grew up in a city where people would side eye you real quick, mm -hmm. and be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You know her age, right? But, I mean, people, you know, if if people want to ship them, I, like, for every other ship, I can't stop you. It's just not going to be in my favorite ship. I find that Lydia's other ships have been way better than this. Mm -hmm. Every ship that Lydia has been in has been better than this. So, that's just my personal opinion. Even that gay dude who's in her bed for like two seconds. <laughs> that one I, episode. You mean Colton Wannabe? Yeah, the Colton Wannabe. Which totally is the nice canon that that's what she did for like that whole entire summer was just find guys that reminded her of Jackson. Of Jackson. And fuck them. Well, exactly, but she's an independent woman. She's getting over him, and I'm like, mm, she's really not. <laughs> she's sleeping with every gay guy in the tri-state area. <laughs> so, um, it says, isn't it telling that the only thing I've seen Team Wolf related from last night was Dylan's I don't give an F tweet to watch the show. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I don't watch anymore because I know I'd be on full range, so thanks, you guys, for keeping up the podcast. You're welcome. Um... Yeah, I haven't heard... The only stuff that I've really heard are the Scott Stans acting up. And I'm like, what gets you so mad that you're saying that you hope that Claudia is rotting in hell? Like, that's such a weird thing to me. It's so aggressive for no reason. It is more aggressive than I, than I would have thought that they would get. Yeah. I mean... Like I said on again on the podcast, is that the story's always been Scott and Styles. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't just about, you know, Scott is the main character, yeah. But the story really has always been these two friends being pulled into the supernatural world. One through the supernatural, the other one through being the human of the show. Even though I still think he's supernatural, but that's just me. You know, and I even said it on again on the podcast. Even the movie, the movie was always about. The main two characters, and it was always Scott and Styles. It was mm -hmm. it was always it was always about those two characters. Um, so Styles having scenes, having a storyline separate of Scott makes sense. Any any show, any supernatural show that you watch, sooner or later these side characters are going to have their own storyline, their own their own scene mm -hmm. because that just develops the story more. Um, I mean, for those who watch Buffy. Buffy, yes, it was about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but the show really, when it came on, if you really it was watched ensemble. it, it was an ensemble cast, but the show was really about her, Willow, Xander, and Giles. And guess what? Each and every one had their own separate story, separate line, had their own scenes. The thing that bugs it, me it is that... Makes, even Supernatural. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, every, every Supernatural It's about the show. brothers. It's not just about Sam. It's not just about Dean. It's about the brothers, but then it's also about Castiel. It's also about... Mm -hmm. Crowley. It's also about, you know, Joe and, yeah. uh, uh, and Ellen. Jody and, yeah, yeah and Ellen and, and all that um, stuff. I don't, I don't understand this concept of, we love Scott McCall, we love Scott McCall, let's tell, you know, Posey how much we love Scott McCall, how much we feel he's being, un, you know, devalued by trashing his best friend. I don't understand that thought process and of thing why is you is think that, that. If you feel like he's being devalued, then you need to go to the writers of the show. Thank you. It has nothing to do with the other characters. It's the fact that or they're the not fandom. writing. Or the fandom. Yeah. They're responding the to what's not, being put out. It's the fact that they're not writing Scott properly. They really are. And the are. thing is, is that they're putting Scott as the background character when he should be, you know, the person who's solving the story or you know anyone could solve a story there's been multiple shows where it's not the main two characters solving it but the thing is, is that he recently has been taken out of so much of the equivalent that he has been sidetracked but that's not his fault that's not any of the other actors fault that's the writing set that's jeff's fault and the thing is is that they made sky into a weaker character when they built him up and the thing is like i said before i feel like personally we we got him as an alpha way too soon yeah I feel like he should have had more well, seasons. With, you know, the problem was we got him as an alpha way too soon. He had to support 
mm-hmm. group, but he didn't use it and he mm-hmm. didn't know how to. So now he has no support mm-hmm. and he's even more lost. And the people that he could go to support, which is a lot of the adults, they don't use that. Are scattered. We, we said mm-hmm. that. We're like, he has to tell me. Like, the thing is, is that one of the things he learned about the Hells is the fact that the Hells were, had the, were the head family over all the werewolves. They had a support system that broke off when the fire happened. They could have actually used him rebuilding a relationship with Satomi's pack, and that would have shown how Scat is the true alpha mm-hmm. over all the werewolves. Exactly. The fact that he had the Yukimoras at his handle, which is, again, a vast knowledge. It's a thousand-year-old woman, or four thousand. I don't even know how old she is anymore. I can't remember, but yeah, she's but, old. You know, she's old. <laughs> Mom have been around. You know, you have this family that could know some supernatural shit. You have Dean, who was not only working with the Hell family originally, he seems like he might be older than Dirt, too. You right. have these researchers. <laughs> and the, like I said, you have the Argents, which is, again, one of the oldest the oldest hunting family. You had these resources, and you didn't use them. Mm-hmm. And again, I don't blame that on Sky. I blame it on the writing of the show. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that I still love Scott McCall. There was a tip, but I'm also going to point that shit out. There was a tip during their conversation where um, he said, oh, his, uh, oh, God, what was it? He said, how uh, his heart skipped a beat or whatever, and he was like, when asking, oh, he didn't say that he attacked your dad. Mm-hmm. And literally, Tyler Posey looks down, he says, oh, wait, he didn't say he attacked your dad, did he? And the way that it was presented was like, it almost makes Scott look guilty. But you can tell it wasn't meant to do that. It was just a bad line <laughs> with the bad delivery. And you have to wonder if those are the things that are getting through. A, what's on the cutting room floor? And B, what is happening that that is the best plot device that you could come up with to bring that information to the forefront? Mm-hmm. Scott being like, oh, wait a minute. He didn't say it was him that attacked you. And it's like, who wrote this? <laughs> you know, like how how drunk was Jeff when he wrote this episode? It's just really strange, really stilted. Uh, Liddy X. Martin, who we love, she's adorable. She says, a Q for the Q&A. What is going on? <laughs> I still don't know why Theo needed his sister's heart. Could someone explain that to me? You'll heal uh, cold-blooded styles is back and I love it. Parrish needs to hop on a bus and take his nasty butt out of Beacon Hills in Lydia's life. Mama Martin was on one tonight. Yeah, Mama Martin was on one tonight. What was she thinking checking Lydia into the Eichen house? That place is crazy. I still don't understand the timing. <laughs> Excited for the return of the podcast. Hashtag train wreck. We talked a lot about the timing uh, during the podcast. And uh, we talked about um, Parrish um, and about Mama Martin being a terrible mother. God. Um, Theo needing his sister's heart, yeah, so that he could be a chimera. And then specifically them needing Theo's heart, I believe to create Libet, I guess. Or oh, so the thing that's going to fight So you Libet. think they took out Theo's heart? Well, they had to have, to put his sisters. He doesn't have two hearts. You, he could be the doctor. <laughs> the doctor has two hearts. He could, he could totally... No, I think they took, I think they took Theo's heart. If they end up stabbing him in the heart, he's still moving. I, I, it proves my That would be so funny. He's like, wrong side. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got I mean, that back Jeff, up. Wait for it to kick in. I mean, Jeff's been stealing from Doctor Who, too, so I wouldn't be surprised if he randomly has two hearts. Oh, my goodness. That would be the best plot twist, though, wouldn't it? That would be a, I would be if so If Scott, mad. like, stabs him, he's like, <laughs> he he's tried. Like, you tried it. <laughs> Hashtag tried it. <laughs> Where, um, so Cole is saying that it was 1.112. Where is this coming from? I saw 1.7. Still, though. We are doing Ah. Kira slash Arden so dirty. I know we complain about how other characters are being treated, but she has the worst by a mile. She's been missing from three episodes, big episodes, two in a row now. 
and no one cares. It is said. I hope Arden leaves we the show this season. We care. They said that she's supposed to return next episode. I thought she had at least one more out, but I think it was the finale and then this premiere. I mean, and then she's I gonna was, have a bottle episode. I was still sh- shocked that she was still in the opening. Because I really, just because we hadn't heard anything about her, mm-hmm. I thought they had completely cut her off. And I was just like, they are really screwing her over. Um, but, I mean, then how many days was she actually gone back to New York then if she's coming back the next episode? We don't know what happened in New York. If they even went to New York this time, because evidently they're going to be in the desert. <laughs> so I don't know. I have no clue. It makes no sense. You know what's going to happen? She's going to get the same treatment they gave Brain, and they're going to, like, literally show her up for five minutes, and then she's going to be like, so, hey, I'm here to help you. She's going to give that magical help that she's always done, Mm -hmm. and then they're going to kill her off. I bet you this is the season they kill her off. I think so. Because Malia can't can't compete with more than one girl on the show. Mm, Well. And obviously they're making it that Scott can't ever have a love life, so. God. That would be so freaking tragic. They're trying to make him second Derek, and I'm going to kill someone. So, um, it says, some of the mess I've been seeing from Scott stands right now is so Honestly, vile. I want Arden to be free. Yeah. I want Arden and Holland to be free. Yeah. One post involves a gif from The Exorcist where the possessed girl is saying, your mother sucks cock in hell. Others make reference to Styles' rotting mom, say the sheriff should just die so Styles will be orphaned, or say they should both die and join Claudia in hell. They're generally terrible people. It's no wonder they would stand for a boy who told Derek that his family deserved to be burned alive. I will say there's one person in particular who started as hating uh, Styles, but then realized that she couldn't keep it up. So all of a sudden, you know, Styles was just the loin, the fire in her loins, and she loves to Leah and blah blah blah. And I just saw her jump right back on the anti-Styles train, just leading it all over. And I said, "You couldn't wait for this day so that you could start hating on Styles again." Um, yeah, that's disgusting, you guys. Don't be like that. <laughs> don't, don't be like that. Where you're talking about his mama and all that mess. I just that's. That's like a new level of petty because it's not even really related to the show or anything that's going on with it. It's just petty for petty's sake. And I'm here for petty for petty's sake, but not when it's like, that's disgusting. (laughs) You know, like, don't be like that. Um, oh, Ryan, actually, I'm glad he asked this. How, Ryan with Cupcake, how weird is it that Liam's mother is such a non-entity? Can you think of any other example of a character having a step parent being a major relationship without the parent also being involved? Where's there's Liam's been, there's mom? There's been some shows where it's been the step parent becoming a major relationship to the kids. I becoming, think, yeah, but not starting. But you never know how long he's known. No, I mean for this show, exactly. That's the point. It was we. Where is his mom? Is she alive? We don't even know if she's alive. Well, if she, she could be if dead. If she's dead, then how does Doctor Kugel even have him as a? Unless, unless, Liam doesn't, unless, unless his, his dad Liam, might be dead. Unless Liam doesn't have any other family or live in another state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So this this again. They just wanted to give him a black daddy. Let him have a black daddy. Oh, I'm happy he has his black okay, daddy. If my friend, my Je- black daddy, if, if my friend, <laughs> if my friend Amber's boyfriend who's white can have Let's a black brother, he can have a dad on black daddy. Exactly. <laughs> Jack has a black brother, and I remember her telling me that he had a brother. And I was like, oh, okay, and she's like, yeah, he's black, and I'm like, Jack is the whitest. He dad has a yet. brother. <laughs> he has a brother from a brother. From a <laughs> from, from another, another mother. mother. <laughs> but um, and so I don't. Because you would think that this is a conversation, because evidently Mason knows. Mm -hmm. And you would think that this would be a conversation that Scott and him would have, especially with Liam as his sire. But we honestly have no clue, because this is the most disjointed pack on Earth. We have no idea what's going on. Is one of the reasons he had so many anger issues is because maybe his mom left. And, you know, and like, maybe Dr. Coco was the only daddy that... Liam has ever known. I mean, it's just, there's so much potential there to give him a little more depth, but they skip right over it to give him a cockamamie love story about imprinting. And, oh God, I just, I don't know. It's really strange. Um, Imprint my heart. No, girl. 
say you love Leave me, me alone. And you just <laughs> came out your clothes and you walked out the door. Walked out, out of my life. Uncried his tears. Cried so many nights. Unbreed my heart. Well, who was I singing this the other day? And we were getting it. We were going. Oh, I was in Omaha. It was such a mess. Because we started just playing. And then ended up saying the whole song was just like, oh. Oh, God. you put on so some Tony fun. Braxton. I can sing her from the very first album. Uh, I have Tony Braxton. All I was singing. I don't know if it counts as cute for 511, but why was finding the name of time in the previous season so difficult when you could simply go to the library and open a book about telluric currents? Or why didn't they use Danny's project paper in 3A? Um, no, it was stupid. They didn't even need to do that. Just go. Oh, so that's what I was talking to a friend about. Um, I've written this uh, little fic where um, Derek gets pregnant. It's, it's a long, drawn-out story. But uh, they were like, oh, okay. I know, it's a mess. Uh, but, um, I was waiting for the end but, uh, in my life. God, God, but, just give me, the, give me the trigger. Like, no dudes that's have gotten pregnant. That's really, really dirty. I, I, I know. <laughs> But no dudes have gotten pregnant for centuries, and so they're like, how did Derek get pregnant? No one knows, no one knows. Finds out that it was because he had sex on the supermoon. <laughs> so then after that, everyone just started getting pregnant. And I feel like that's what's happening. And it was supposed to be a joke because the supermoon is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But then you see that basically they're doing the exact same thing with the name of time. Like, oh, you never thought to look at it with your supernatural eyes. And I'm just like, okay. I'm like, and again, we talked about this on the podcast, but mm -hmm. I will bring it up yet again. The name of Tar was one of those things you either had to earn it or you had to sacrifice yeah. to see it. And I don't understand how now every single person can stumble across it, whether they're human or they're fucking, you know, supernatural. How every single person in this damn town is just like, hey, what's that broke it down tree over there? Right. It looks like a stump. <laughs> Where the hell is the cellar? Where the hell is the thing that actually caved in? Where is any of this stuff? How is it all these people who were not in the season that the Nematon was even brought up in know where the hell this place is? And the Nematon you know? travels, but the bodies don't travel. Because what I would have liked is if Mason were like, oh, it's a beacon. Mm -hmm. And then Liam turned on his eyes and he saw like a glow in the distance mm -hmm. and he like ran toward it. I would like that, but he was just like, oh, there it is. And I'm just like, Mason is random open field. But I was just like, wasn't it deep and then in the, the forest? And then, uh, Mason was like, I don't see it. I don't see it. And he was like, look. <laughs> look with your natural eyes. <laughs> with your supernatural eyes. But it wasn't even just that. It was like the fact so that it deep. used to be like deep, deep in the woods. It used to be near the hell houses. The hell house didn't even exist anymore. Girl, these woods have listen. morphed. Evidently, <laughs> there was a freaking earthquake that opened up a giant gorge that Hayden and Liam are going to be jumping over next week. Such a mess. I'm just like, I'm so confused by it now. So I'm just like, can people at least die to see the Nimitron now? Exactly. So I'm like, and like I said, I even said this. I was like, I understand Lydia and Parrish, mm -hmm. since they are both supernatural and they're connected to the underworld. Right, them being, being able, able to, to find, find it. it. I understand Scott knowing where it is. I understand Styles knowing it is because they Girl, all died Theo, to find this Theo's shit. got a timeshare there. <laughs> like, how the hell did Theo find it? So, uh, Hayden is making up brochures, is, yeah, travel place, brochures. Like, and place, here's the This place has been hidden for like, what was it, 15, 20 years? This place has been hidden forever. Oh, years and years and years. And all of a sudden, all these people were just like, hey, I'm near the town. Guess what I just found? Like, let's go take pictures for the Nematon. Yeah. <laughs> I just, and the thing is, is like, they keep trying to make up things for why Beacon Hill is Beacon Hills. Like, Beacon Hills is the beacon for all the supernatural. Then you had Scott's werewolf call calling all the people like it was a exactly. beacon. Exactly. And now it's like the Nematon is the reason why everything. I'm like, so what is the beacon then? What is the beacon? Is it the town? Is it the fucking hell like, house? Is it the daggone werewolf call? What is it? You're like, what is the beacon? They're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know where I'm supposed to ask questions for the YouTube. This is right in our ask box. I but I found it. myself strangely not hitting on Malia. Oh, honey. No. And <laughs> for a minute, I thought she had already gone and left with Brayden in the middle of the night. But I still couldn't tell how the weather is in this town. <laughs> Thank you. Her shorts. I thought I was 
is like winter time or like fall time there. Why I don't, you don't understand how they dress these children. I thought it was still like, I thought they were still in the middle of the fall season. I don't know. And my second question in theory, what if... Why does everyone else have long sleeves on a multiple layers except for her? Because she's a coyote and she gets hot, I guess. What the fuck know. is Scott? Just... Scott isn't tripping out in his damn shirt. He's just showing a damn bloody Scott's bullet Scott's having hole. a lot of problems right now. <laughs> Uh, what if Mama Satan Martin is one of the Dread Doctors? I don't think so. I'm wondering if Styles' mama... See, and this is this was my problem. I said, if these were just still in Ski Family Fields, that's fine. But if you're trying to tell us something, it leads to either Styles being a chimera or something crazy, or it leads to uh, Styles' mom actually not being dead, which would be messed up. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, the contrast in the lighting in Styles' house and the lighting in the hospital was disorienting. Unless the hospital was boarded up and took out most of the bulbs to save money on lighting, it shouldn't be that dark. Uh, they're trying to make it so people won't know anyone's home. <laughs> oh, Greyhound Girl says, for the Q&A, if I'm not too late, did they really air a Shadowhunters ad during the Team Wolf? Uh, I get that we watch TV differently now, but the show is on the same time as yours. <laughs> Can't wait to see you guys back. Yeah, that was a mess. I was gonna, that's what I was saying. I was like, how are you promoting a show that's on a rival channel? But not just, a rival show, and it's going to be supposedly on the same time as you. I love that you were like, um, and I was totally like, I'm but here they for aren't show. going to support you back. <laughs> like, exactly. you will not see a single team. They're with not that. going to beg on support them at all. And the thing is, is that I'm going to be DVRing. Shadow, I that's the thing. I like I said, I didn't, I actually forgot that Team Wolf had even moved days. Because I had actually programmed it so that I can watch Shadowhunters, mm -hmm. just in case I work late on Tuesdays, because I actually forgot Team Wolf was on. So, uh -huh. I'm going to be that honest person. I'm going to be watching Shadowhunters with more uh, enthusiasm yes, than Team Wolf. I'm sorry, fans, but I am. Oh, I'm got to apologize. <laughs> they know what's up. Um, I'm just saying. It's just so that Noah guy had to be the chimera that Malia fought in the hospital, which mm -hmm. yes. Uh, that's the only way she could have known who he was and known his scent. Um, yeah. But also, how does Scott know that? And again, we're dealing with the timing issue. When did Scott talk to Malia to know that? To know, oh, by the way, I fought a chimera at the school the other night. <laughs> and it's like, can you help us find him? It's such a weird assumption of a conversation that didn't happen. Okay, so yeah, I let's do Juliana's actually. I will answer it now, and then um, if I find any more, we'll do them on the. I'll, I'll answer them on the page. So first of all, I have to say is I hadn't realized just how very little I still cared about the show until this episode. Like everything I cared about, uh, pretty much just involved Styles, and that was it. Lol. They got me with the Stalinsky family feels because I can't help those, and they knew for sure what they were doing. I didn't even feel that. <laughs> they usually do. I was suspicious from the very beginning, mm -hmm. so I was just like, mm, until the um, you've had me, and I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. Especially after that crap between Sheriff and Styles last season, and the Mason book thing was actually genuinely funny too. Which made me sadder afterwards because it made me reflect on just how bad things really had gotten. I mean, the show used to be truly funny, and now even that is almost completely gone. Of course, I was also here for the Steo. I kind of love how Styles was like, no worry, he'll come to me. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, queen. And the confrontation between Styles and Scott was the only other good thing. Ugh. After Scott caught the true Toyota and reminded me that girl even existed, I just wish Styles would have ran him over us too. <laughs> I did appreciate Styles not wanting to deal with any of these idiots though and Leah actually saying they broke up which I hope it stays that way. Besides that, ugh, Marish was gross. Liam, Hayden, Mason get more and more boring. <laughs> Malia should have stayed wherever she was for I the entire mind. first half of the app. Hold on. Mama Martin is a disaster. Mama McCall does what she can but uh, that's not much, unfortunately. And Papa Argent should never have come back. Seriously, what was the drug doctor's force field crap? I didn't mind Liam and Mason so much just because I know what they're trying to do with them. But Mason, honestly, like Mason's the best thing. He's a standout for me. He's yeah, he's doing he very is. well. And the thing is that I just have this thing where I'm like, Mason, stop trying to be in this group so much because they are going to get you killed. 
and just run, baby boy, run. You're a minority and you're gay. You're not going to survive. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just my heartbeat every single time. Um, I'm just I'm just waiting for Mason to die. Like, yeah. I, cause I know it's going to happen, which is really sad. Um, I feel so bad for Mom McCall because it's true. She's handled this like a champ. Like, when you really think about it, she's handled all this shit that she's been phoned like a champ. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't get due, she's still working two jobs. Why can't Scott be working for her? Where, where is Scott handling where, some money? Yes, exactly. Like, this woman is still working her nine to nine job, and she's still always in her scrub. She's never at home. When does she get some sleep? Um, I don't care about Mrs. Martin. I really don't care about Lydia's mom. Lydia's mom can, like, get hit by a car. I understand like, what they're trying to do with Lydia's mom. They're trying to make her the human element, but instead of making her the human element, they're making her the stupid element. Because mm -hmm. you live in Beacon Hills and mm -hmm. you know what's going on, but you're being willfully well, ignorant. The thing, what they need to do true. is get Dr. Coco involved, and I think that they're going to. I really hope that they do. I was going to say that... Because he knows. Well, I was going to say, that's the thing, is that they keep having human elements in the parents, mm -hmm. but then they keep exposing them as what's happening, and... With Sheriff, he kind of denied half of it, but then he also kind of understands his last resort is to go to them. Mom was just kind of like, look, I'll just deal with it because you know what I got to do. She mm -hmm. handles it like a champ. Um, I feel like with with, Mom, with Mama Martin, it's true. She is handling it like an idiot, but she's also dealing with a whole bunch of stuff that she keeps time and time again being exposed to. And she's just like... You know. She puts on her blinders. She mm -hmm. doesn't want to deal with it, which I understand. But now I'm like, you're putting lives in peril. You're at putting this lives point. in there, but you're putting your own child in peril. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Because if you really because care, if you, you really want to be cute, go send Lydia to live with her dad. Go send, move away. Exactly, because Lydia's 18. She grown. She can do exactly what she wants. Exactly. And I can. Well, I guess you can submit other people to uh, mental. I don't know. I guess she's power of attorney. She probably has power so, of attorney since the girl's kind of out of it. It turns out the 1.7 was Twitter ratings, which I still don't quite understand how that, works. how that works. But the cable ratings were 1.112. Okay. So, yeah, awful. <laughs> but the thing is, I think it is true. I think you're going to get Dr. Coco involved as another human element, as another parent element, and we'll see how he handles everything. But the thing is, is that honestly, like, if she gets hit by a bus, I wouldn't care. Yeah. She's really that unnecessary element. And, and I... And, my point of view is I think they're doing it as a parallel to Scott's mom. Yeah, you know? someone involved versus someone who's just like, meh. Exactly. And you have parents, like, they've done this, again, in different Supernatural shows, where they've had the parents either really involved or parents, they know what's up and they still kind of ignore it. And there's been multiple shows like this. Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> Pretty Little Liars done that. Mm -hmm. Buffy did that mm -hmm. with her mom for a long time. The mom knew the shit that was happening and then just kind of... Denied it, it. yeah. So I'm like, there's a bunch of shows that have done this, and I'm just like, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see. But yeah, the thing is, is that it's it's really annoying because I'm just like, either make her, she's just making it worse. Like she's ma literally made it worse for Lydia. Lydia has already had some shit happen to her. You know, shit's happened to her. Exactly. Why would you put her somewhere that's defenseless where she can't be protected? Mm -hmm. You don't even have an eye on you. And you. Let's be honest. You saw what happened to your mother. Your own mother was fucked up in this hospital. Exactly. I just don't understand that. Why I would don't you put understand your child in this it. What? Oh, girl. Talking about we've had a lot of changes and a lot of renovations. Show me. <laughs> Show me exactly. your she was, reviews. She, just, she, she was just like, like, okay, here you go. Take her. Take her. Uh, what happened to your house on the waterfront? Girl, their lake house. <laughs> that was only around for one season. Yep. Oh my god, this show is awful. We remember All more right, about this dagon. We remember more about this town than they, they do. do. <laughs> that's why I, just, I was like, didn't didn't uh, the mental ward wasn't that like near the beach? <laughs> how you get near town house? And they kept saying it was miles and miles away. Because remember they were talking about how Meredith had yeah. gotten there and how like how far she had to come. Oh, such a mess. And I was just like, because she obviously walked all the way from the beachside part of the ocean. It's so stupid. <laughs> to their town, and all of a sudden, that place is like literally around the corner. You guys, we're going to have a whole season of this. <laughs> so is thank this, what, you. ten episodes? Yeah. Oh, it really is just ten episodes? Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> from whom all so blessings So that means we flow. only got three months of this. 
Why do you even have to say that? <laughs> Sounds awful. No, awful. No, it's going to go by really fast. Okay. Good night. Say good night, Mama. I'm just mad because, again, they moved it to the day where I actually had TV shows where I have The Flash and I have all the Yeah, we're going to have to figure out something. Because I can't be doing Team Wolf and supporting them when I have better shows that are on. Especially when I'm going to be Monday pumping nights. up Shannara. <laughs> or not Shannara, uh, Shadowhunters. Like, Monday nights was my dead night. <laughs> 10 o'clock was my dinner. I don't watch shit at 10 o'clock. Like. This show is trash. This just totally fucked up. And I think Face Off comes back on. I will be leaving this place <laughs> in the middle of the show. Like, just so I can watch Face Off. I'm so mad. Peace out, y'all. Until next week, check us out on Twitter, BHAD Podcast, on Tumblr, BHAD Podcast. Check out LenoirArtur.com. There'll be a link Hair for uh, the weekly recaps. And um, stay tuned. Send us asks. We love it. Um, and we're going to have lots of fun guests this season to try and put up with the mess of the season already. So. The Say shade will be really nice this year because it seems like it's already going to be a nice little bucket for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> good night. Bye. <laughs>